Do we have a frozen part there? Looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you have to go live. And then... <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is. That's how yes. it is. 2022, <laughs> we're still struggling with the internet. <laughs> Hey everyone, okay. welcome to the show. Uh, we had a starting glitch out here. So you can see Parth, who was supposed to introduce us and we could find him frozen. So we just came in. <laughs> I think he's out already from the stream. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Nish. Yeah, What's up, Vivek? How are, things? How are you? Nobody introduced us. So I'm Vivek, uh, Senior Cloud Advocate, Microsoft. Nish, go ahead. My name is Nish. I work as a senior program manager on the uh, developer divisions uh, community team. So everything that we do here is advocacy and beyond. Uh, I also manage something called as dot dot net slash architecture, where there's a bunch of reference guidances, uh, ebooks, samples, like building you know real dot net apps uh, in scale, right, in cloud. So that's that's all those the things that I. Um, I work on. So, pretty excited to be here today, Vivek. What are we? What are we learning today? So we, are, we are going to learn a lot of things. But before we go there, right? You know, it's been almost a year. We started this, mm -hmm. um, the, you know, Samosa Chai .dot net show. Um, yeah. Last year, uh, .dot net conf, similar time, we launched yeah. this show, and we have been learning new things in .dot nets, building microservices. Uh, Blazor apps and Maui apps and a lot of stuff. So, yeah, one year of samosachai.net. So, yeah, congrats to you. Fantastic. It's been it's been that long I've known you because I know that was the first time I got introduced to you and then you said you wanted to learn .NET and we said, why don't we put together a show and teach everyone uh, just like Vivek uh, to get uh, an understanding of .NET, right? And he, now here we are after one year we are trying to do a getting started session on .NET and C Sharp. Isn't it exciting? Yep, <laughs> definitely. And 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 today we are going to just refresh uh, the whole things which we have done, right? So there are a bunch of things which which we have learned in last three seasons of SamosaChai.net. And uh, today we'll do the refresher. What's your Nish? Yes. Before that, uh, do you want to talk about the code of conduct? Now that part yes. is part out. Is missing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'm going to add the screen right now. Yep. So this particular event uh, is covered with the with our code of conduct and uh, take a bit of time, take one minute uh, to read uh, what what this is. Basically, uh, respect others when you're posting something in the chat and uh, be respectful as well. And uh, we will try and answer all all the questions and so be friendly to others be friendly to us as well we have patience because we are also uh, driving the session sometimes we miss out some of the questions as well uh, so don't uh, worry about uh, anything and and also uh, be open uh, and uh, ask questions uh, in the chat so we are happy to answer most of them so yeah that's that's our code of conduct so let's uh, what's say Nish? let's go yeah. deep dive Absolutely. And before that, welcome, everybody. I, I'm hearing some highs, hellos. Tell, also, tell us where you're joining us from. 6 a.m. at CST. Good morning, Colonel. Very nice to have you here. Uh, it is 4.35 p.m. in India, and it's a specific time where we have this chai break, uh, which is like uh, having a tea and then chit-chat. This is the show is all about that, having samosas, having chai, uh, and having some tech chat as we go. Uh, and Sudanshu, hi everybody. Uh, has a great day and a happy November. Yes, it is. Uh, close close enough for holidays as well in December. Uh, did you plan anything for your holidays, Vivek? Yeah, I'm I'm might be going for some conference. <laughs> <laughs> That's your holiday? Yeah. Wow. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I know you you just came from a vacation. So uh, you, you see it? me tanned, like you know. Um, yeah, I, I went to Goa and uh, it's been fun. Um, for, I mean, it's, it's like when you have long weekends, um, like Tuesday was a holiday here in Karnataka, the state in which we are in. And, uh, so I took the Monday off. So got the five days together. Uh, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. Fantastic. So what, let's get started then. Yeah, so, absolutely. What are we learning today? Okay. Let me share my screen here. 
let me bring up the screen so whenever we do uh some such an event, we always have a cloud skill challenge because that's something which we put together a uh, bunch of modules and uh, that's what uh, it's all about. So so the, today's uh, you know, show is all about you preparing yourself for .NET Conf, which is happening. And .NET Conf is happening on the 8th. Uh, if you go to .NET Conf, let me post it in the chat so you can register there. So... If you are new to .NET and if you are, uh, you know, if you want to get familiarized with everything with respect to .NET, that's what we are doing today. And we're going to talk about what all things you can build, what all things you can do with .NET, and just getting started with it. And uh, that's what we are put together in in our Cloud Skill Challenge as well. So yeah, uh, so let me post the link of the Cloud Skill Challenge as well. But you're back so or. Oh, .NET Conf is a premier event for .NET, right? So that's where we launch uh, also the new version of .NET. Um, so we are very close to launching .NET 7. Uh, there are some really cool stuff there. Uh, so check it out. Um, so this session is basically is kind of a primer to everybody who is in the, in the .NET platform for the first time, newcomers, uh, want to learn C Sharp. So we're going to do that very basics of .NET, very basics of C Sharp. You have questions, please feel free to post them in the comments. And if you are already familiarized with .NET, uh, feel free to answer them there as well. Uh, bring up some interesting, um, in interesting experiences for, uh, with .NET that you have had. Uh, we would love to um, add them into the show as well. So um, make it interactive. Uh, your comments are. We're going to pull it up, and we're going to. Uh, and we're going to chat about it too. Right? So it's a very informal thing that we're doing right now. Um, so yeah, let's chat and learn uh, on .NET. Yep. So the link to ClassSkill Challenge is there. Uh, just go to that ClassSkill Challenge, register yourself, and that's what we're going to do now. If you come here, I'm going to give you some challenges where you can also go back and try it out with us while we are doing it. Uh, you can also try it. So that is for the reason why I'm asking you to go to that link and register and play around with the first module which we have, which is writing your first uh, C-sharp uh, code, right? So basically, we'll go here and we will learn what C-sharp is, right? Um, so Anish, there is always a confusion, right? So it's is mm -hmm. it C-hash or C-sharp? <laughs> it should be pronounced C-sharp. It's, C -sharp. yeah, when you say C-sharp, think of the notation that you will use in the music, right? C-sharp. So these Even are things which I learned. These, yeah, yeah, these are things which I learned in samosachai.net. It was just like first episode. Um, you know, if you go back to our first episode and you, you learn these, uh, you know, you just go through this first episode, you'll know. Uh, we did talk about C sharp or C hash or what this. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so it's a so uh, so basically we'll start with you know what this is right. So basically it's a programming language, and uh, definitely you could build mobile apps, you can build uh, web apps and uh, and games as well uh, using this particular programming language. And it is any other programming language uh, you know similar to that. And we will see. Uh, the similarities as well while we build one uh, very simple hello world first and but we'll anyways go back and see how this will get further as well right so let's deep dive into exercise and the good part about this learn module is there is a .NET editor and you can play around with it uh, without even installing a, the .NET on your uh, system you can uh, write simple code and try it out and uh, you know it's very uh, self-explanatory what uh, we are doing here and other things you know it's very simple you can just copy the code which is here and you know just paste it here and say hello world welcome to samosa chai show okay. i missed dot net huh? with dot net right Nish? yeah Let's run this. Let's so this is how it is. It's very simple. Um, all it's doing is there's a class uh, which is console class, and there is uh, you know there is a method uh, which is a right line method, and then we are just passing uh, some string, and we just we just want to uh, you know basically print something. So we are doing that. It's a simple print statement, which every every programming language starts with this, right? We always start with 
one print statement and see how it how the output looks like right so that's that's what it is so uh, this is a simple um, c sharp uh, program which we have written and the way it executes the, the explanation here in this module is basically uh, how this executes um, you know if you click on this run button what it does it's basically a, you have the code which is human readable format uh, which will get converted into computer readable format which is a compiled code and then it runs so that is that's all it does and it, this is very typical uh, you know any if you go to any programming language if you run any programming language that's the typical way of doing it right so that is how it works so here you will find some couple of things like you can make some errors and what does those error means and other things so we don't want to go in in depth with like understanding how errors are uh, how to uh, read these errors and other things it's pretty self explanatory so if you go through this module it will you will understand that and uh, let me come to this one as well like how this works right so let me copy this so this is a simple code and if you see there is b different uh, you know uh, instead of calling a right line method we are calling just right so the reason is very simple we are just trying to uh, write this one next to each other that's it so it's not like a line but it is just right to next to each other right so that if you yeah. want to do that you know you can just run it and you will be able to run this route so these are this also is very yeah. The code commenting, right? I mean, it's very yeah. s similar to the other languages as well. So you do a double whack. Um, you can comment the code. You can use uh, the the slash and the star for if you have multi line commenting. Uh, you can do that too. And yeah, so as uh, as Vivek mentioned, this console dot write and write and write lines are different different methods. Uh, if if you're using write, you can also use escape sequences like slash n to uh, go into the next line. You can do slash 10, sorry, slash T to tab it. So you can use those similar things that you would already been doing. Um, and also you can you can use at the rate simple before the codes open, and then it'll just print exactly how you write it inside. You can write whatever you want inside that, and it will print the same thing. Sometimes yep. you want to have tags. Sometimes you have file paths that you want to print. Uh, so when you use some um, escape sequence characters, it will try to interpret differently. So that's when you, you can use something like an add symbol to uh, escape those things. Yeah. So so this let me continue with this. How how it works. So basically mm -hmm. um, it's it's very simple, right? This is programming language and this is where the way you write is programming languages, any programming languages like it's in a human readable format and then computer uh, you compile it and it gets converted into the computer readable uh, you know format and then instruction which they call it and then uh, and then it gets executed so that's that's how uh, this is uh, this programming language also works and what is compilation very neatly explained uh, it's kind of a program to convert uh, the source code into a, you know, uh, instructions which can be uh, read by the computer, right? So that is one. And syntax is nothing but a grammar uh, for writing your programming language, which can be understood by uh, the compiler to uh, convert it into the instructions for the computers, right? So that's the one. And it's the same thing which I explained, right? This is the class. This is the method and this is how it executes and one by one it's been printed here so this is uh, this this module covers pretty much those things and how the flow works and other things so what i want all of Vivek. you to do right now is so yeah yeah Nish. yeah quick thing i mean uh, there's a question uh, what does this add the symbol is for and uh, that the slash Let, let's try this out right why, why don't we do it right now uh, so I'll, I'll i'll give you instructions where you can just type it in for me uh, so sure. after uh, just leave that there. I mean, just leave that there. So in after congratulations, uh, after the um, the uh, exclamation mark, put a space and then put the backslash character. N. Type N. Yeah. So that's the new line, right? So just run it again. Yep. So if you run this, it will go into the new line. It'll go Correct. to the next line, right? Okay. Perfect. So now put the add symbol uh, before the codes before the codes yeah. yeah this one and try running it yeah now see what happened 
So it actually, it actually took that it. exactly as is, right? So that's what uh, it helps you do. You can actually, um, after the congratulations, put N, N there. Uh, I mean, before the slash N, just um, give a return, like enter on your keyboard. keyboard. Here? Yeah, yeah, enter. Enter. One more, and go up and type something. Give a space. Give five spaces. Five, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay. And type something. Samosa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, now click run. And you can see it's exactly how it is written there. It just prints there. So, so those are exactly. advantages. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah. N another question. Can you use uh, slash NR? Yes, you can use. That's what we yeah. just showed you. And it's the other way, the slash, uh, not the way you're written, Kunal, but the other way. Uh, and it'll escape that. Cool. Um, so I, would, so I want people one. to try this out, the same thing mm -hmm. which uh, we are trying it out here, right? So there is, if you go to this module and go to this uh, Cloud Skill Challenge in the same first module, write your first uh, C-sharp code. Uh, there is a challenge for you to print these two outputs. So why don't you, all of you, try it out and share the code with us in the chat. Uh, while we speak about our vacations and you know uh, different things which we are going to show now, uh, especially from the .NET Conf, what what all we have in .NET Conf and other things, but let let uh, let us give some five minutes time, Nish, uh, for yeah. everyone to try it out because that's the show is all about, right? You go and try out uh, the .NET editor which is here. Uh, before we get into more uh, details about all of these things, right? So, yeah. show us the That's code. Question. Yeah, one question. Uh, yeah, it does the same thing. Like you know, it's very similar. Like right line is each time you write right line, it prints in a new line, and you can do uh, backslash n as well. Uh, if you want to continue writing it in a single line, you can do that. Um, yeah, uh, so everyone who's joining uh, us, go ahead and write this um, thing. It's pretty straightforward. Um, write it in the comments. How do you exactly get that output? Uh, and then output. we would know that you have tried it out. Yeah, right. This is the output, right? So we we are looking for this output. So if you let's give us let's give them five minutes. Right? Yeah, while let's, while you do that, while you do that, there's a question on .NET Conf Student Zone. Well, do you yep. want to change show that? Yes, so we do have uh, you know student zone in .NET Conf, and there's a bunch of things happening here. So it's happening at India time zone as well. So if you're from part of this uh, uh, this part of the world, you can go here and register. And there are a bunch of sessions which is happening. So you can see that uh, building a complete solution using IoT, ML, uh, minimal APIs, Blazor app, Mavi almost like whatever we are trying to do, right? The, the Cloud Skill Challenge, which we have, uh, covers all of these things as well. So pretty much uh, everything is happening uh, at the student uh, zone, right? So do register if you're a student. You should definitely register. If you're not even a student, student doesn't mean that, you know, you'll have to have to be a student. You have to college-going student. I'm also a student today because I don't know how to do... Uh, IoT with .NET and ML with .NET. So, you know, I also want to join this and learn this stuff. So you can, anyone can join and learn this, right? So that's that's the part of it. So yeah. So uh, any code coming in? Anybody writing code? If you're writing, you know, just fingers and tell us you're writing code, and share the code if you have if you want to share it with us. So. Uh, this is a solution is also here. So you can go back and try this as well and share the solution with us or maybe uh, try it differently. Uh, like how Nish mentioned, there are a couple of things, you know, which we can try it. You can also try different and share it with us. So Nish, um, mm -hmm. I have been talking about, uh, you know, C Sharp. Yeah. And, and I'm talking about .NET Editor and then C Sharp. C Sharp and .NET Editor. Like One second. What? This... Oh. This is a good one too. Console dot right. This is the first oh, line. The yeah, nice. this is the second line. Um, yeah, great. <laughs> nice, buddy. good one. Yeah, you get a samosa. Like... <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Sorry, Vivek. Uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, interrupt you. No, no, no. So, so what I'm doing here mm. is, is uh, you know, C Sharp and then .NET Editor, you know, it's kind mm. of confusing for everyone, right? Because yeah. I'm talking about C Sharp, C Sharp, C Sharp, and there is .NET Editor. What is .NET? What is C Sharp? What is .NET Framework? So I think you need to dig between, you know, a bit into history of .NET. So yes, yeah. you are the best person to talk about uh, history Absolutely. of .NET because I think you have been using it from what, 15 years now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so 2002 is when .NET uh, officially came in as the... Um, as the platform and 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 the languages like uh, C Sharp and VB .NET and came in right. So uh, I started using C Sharp from two thousand three or four. Uh, so I installed .NET one uh, started writing some code, and then so this is me at a computer institute um, because they never taught us taught this in our colleges. So. It was an, a private institute where I went to learn Java and I was teaching Java there. And then eventually this .NET thing came out and then we were all excited because it came in six or six CDs, I guess. Um, and then we installed that. It, it was really amazing to see the IDE that we use is called Visual Studio where you will write this code then. And uh, it was really magical to watch. Uh, I think the excitement those days were the, the Windows forms where you can drag and drop a button or a text box, and then build a Windows app uh, right out of the box from, and that was really cool because those days in Java, you need to write applets, and then you add forms and and, and whatnot. I, I, don't, I mean, I mean, maybe totally telling this wrong, but those days it was much harder to write it. But then here's Visual Studio that comes up and says like, yeah, you can just drag and drop in the designers and just <laughs> do the FI thing, and it just runs. And that was really, really exciting because that's like. The, the the number of time that we would spend in creating these things in code, it was much much easier because the code generation was happening within the um, within the within the designer, right? So that was the first excitement to .NET, and and then eventually .NET 1.0, 1.1, I think. Yeah, I think one 1.1 1 .1 is, I think maybe 2.0 is when I started working uh, in a corporate environment, uh, writing code, and uh, as you rightly said, there's enough confusions about the language, the C-sharp and the .NET. Well, to put that in simple terms, uh, think of .NET like an ecosystem, right? It's an ecosystem to build any app for any platform. But C-sharp is a language that you would use to build it, right? And .NET supports various languages like C-sharp and uh, you know, VB.NET and F-sharp as well. So like, what, what I'll do is I'll bring up my screen here and, and quickly explain this, right? So as we speak, we are in the .NET 6, and we're just weeks away from uh, announcing .NET 7. And this, this .NET, think of it like an ecosystem, right, where you can build for any platforms like cloud, web, desktop, mobile, gaming, IoT. There's a lot of games that is written in, uh, in C Sharp, right, using Unity. Uh, IoT is for ARM32, ARM64, ML.NET, AI. Like think of the platform today, that's the... That's the ecosystem as .NET, right? .NET has various uh, platforms out there for you to build. Now, the language that you would use is anything from C Sharp to F Sharp to VB.NET, but they all compile down to an intermediate language. Uh, so, as Vivek was mentioning, when you were when you were when you are doing a run in your C Sharp, basically what it was doing is it was doing a compilation into IL, and then finally the runtime ticks ticks up the IL and then it runs it on the platform. So for convenience, when you were seeing the .NET code there, it was actually running on the server behind uh, and doing it for you, right? Uh, but when you run it on your machines, it, what, it do, what would do, it would do is when you do a .NET build, uh, it will compile your C Sharp into an IL uh, and then put it in an assembly, co uh, sorry, in, in a DLL. And that DLL, when it is executing, the execution is done by the runtime. So here you can see this. The runtime picks up that, and then further, uh, you know, compiles down to the machine code. Depending on which machine you're running, it could be your Windows machine, it could be your uh, Linux machine, anything, right? So, talking about history, <clears throat> .NET has this history of being Windows only for a very long time, and uh, 
so then even though you used to write this intermediate languages and then compile down it eventually was compiling down to the windows systems and and, and uh, it could be x86 or 64 bits but that's fine but then eventually it was running on windows systems right so i don't recall the exact year we announced dotnet core and dotnet core came in and that was truly cross platform which is you can actually build it on linux you can build it on docker you can build it on IoT, uh, you know, various other platforms out there, right? So including uh, the mobile, uh, which which is basically has a history of Xamarin. There was a Xamarin for iOS, which has a history of something called as MonoTouch, and Xamarin for Android, which has a history of MonoDroid. Mono is basically the, it, it, it was the SDK that was running on Linux, uh, and then eventually ported to iOS and Android platforms. And that was running the, uh, the iOS code in iOS, the Android code in Android, and things like that. But eventually now it's all unified platform now because, uh, I mean, I work for Xamarin uh, and we all uh, became part of the same team now, it's .NET. So everything is integrated with .NET 6. Uh, so you basically write the same code in iOS and Android uh, and Windows using the .NET MAUI, uh, which is the the, the cross-platform solution uh, on .NET where you build for iOS and Android and things. So a so lot of history out here. Uh, so you may, don't get confused if you're a newcomer. Don't be um, don't be uh, intimidated by all these things. All that you need to know is you don't have to know any of the history right now because all that you need to worry about is like, what's the platform that you want to write code today? Do you want to write it in iOS? You can do that in .NET. You want to write it in web? Yes, that's possible. You want to write it in web assembly that's inside your browser? You can do that in .NET. And, and you want to build some games? You can do that using Unity and C Sharp and, uh, you know? So, 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 so mm -hmm. you know why I'm lucky? I started yeah. with .NET 6. Yeah. <laughs> Last year around the same time. Yeah. Last year along the same time. So I can, in fact, I can celebrate the birthday of knowing .NET, like mm -hmm. maybe today <laughs> we can get the cake. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm, I'm, so for, to summarize, so basically uh, .NET is an ecosystem which has, uh, which has language, a different language support. Yeah. And it has a runtime, a common runtime component. Yeah. And then it has a compiler. And then you have common based libraries and APIs, which will, which which can support all the above things, which is there, like the, uh, you know, Mavis and uh, ML.NET, Azure Cloud, and Blazor apps and stuff like that. And Nuggets, uh, NuGets. Uh, NuGets, which is, yes. Which is built on... Which was, which is, which, which, which works with common based libraries, right? So that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's the whole uh, .NET six, right? So if you're new to .NET, so you don't have to worry about all the history which we discussed. Just install .NET six and get started with it. Yeah, exactly. Um, just one quick thing. You said NuGet. NuGet is like the uh, registry for all your packages. Um, so if you know npm in the other world. Uh, it's something like that. Like you can go to newget.org and find for uh, libraries that the developers, our fellow developers who would have already built it. It may be open source. Uh, it may be from a vendor. Uh, you, you know, you can use them, reuse them, so you don't have to rebuild everything. Um, yeah, and then there are like tools. I mean, I know there's there are questions that's coming up, uh, which like, uh, are we abandoning Visual Studio? Absolutely no way we can abandon Visual Studio because it's one of the amazing IDs out there. Um, so the reason why uh, you may see people doing VS Code is just people loving VS Code uh, for the for the lightweight editor it is, and uh, uh, people love to work on it. So we, as a platform provider, we want to ensure that you know, no matter which tool you pick up for your development, we want you to be successful. So absolutely, there's no uh, and and for some of the things like Visual Studio, there's no match to things in Visual Studio uh, to an editor. Um, so uh, some sometimes you need IDEs, right? Sometimes you need some great designer support. Sometimes you need um, those amazing stuffs that the editors can handle, uh, sorry, the IDs can handle it much better for you. So nobody's abandoning Visual Studio. So uh, nobody's pushing VSC. It's just that whatever you want to be successful with, uh, pick that tool, be successful with it. And we, we will work, continue to work to make sure uh, you'll be successful in that, right? So, uh, <clears throat> I hope that answers. Um, I think the of people also answered it with, with the similar thing. 
Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Arthur and Sudanshu and all, all those people who are actually answering these questions for on behalf of us. We really, really appreciate that. All right. Um, yeah, I think I think this slide should sum it up for you. You know, like nobody's abandoning anything. We we want you to be successful in anything that you pick and choose there, right? Okay. So with that, um, should we go see some uh, see some some more demos? What do you say, Vivek? Yes. And okay. by the way, everything is available, whatever we discussed in the introduction to .NET, uh, within yeah. the Cloud Skill Challenge, which we have shared. So you can go back and read it as well. Exactly. Go to introduction to .NET. And, and this is a great uh, course to understand uh, what .NET is, what workloads we have, what app loads we have, um, all these things. Like it, it gives you an umbrella of um, information uh, out there. So give it a try. So. Uh, Vivek, unlike you, I'm not going to execute these things because it's going to take a lot of time to read and do it. Instead, let's 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 do something which which ad hoc <laughs> I'm thinking we should do, and that is like open a terminal and then just maybe start uh, figuring things out, right? Um, so, if you want to get started with .NET, you have the CLI. Again, when I type in these things, it it no way means this is the recommended approach. It's just that you know it's up to you, whatever you're comfortable with it. Just use that. Don't, Nish, don't. Uh, can I just zoom in? Yeah. Uh, small, a little more. Yeah, I think this should work. Yep. Yeah. So before that, if you are new to .NET, go to dot dot .NET. Too many dots uh, in the domain. I just or love this. Dot, yeah, this, this, this particular link. I'm going to share this link in the chat. You know, people should go here and. In fact, I was learning all of these things in the past one year, so people can mm -hmm. go back and learn stuff. Oh yeah, okay. So that's the nice. one you're saying. Yeah. So There's tutorials, um, very nice tutorials. Yeah. So uh, if you're if you're new to C Sharp, you can get started here. Uh, this is the section that I I work on architecture guide. So if you are ten years, fifteen years, twenty years experience, and you're looking at how do I build scalable solutions on the cloud and things like that. There are some really amazing materials here. Anyway, what I wanted to show you here is um, you can go to the download option here. If you're new, um, you can install .NET from here. Or if you are someone like you want to do it, everything in Visual Studio, you can also uh, visualstudio.com. I have this in a long time. Let's see. You go to visualstudio.com and you can use this. Community Edition, again, it's a free um, thing. You can download that. Um, this will install .NET for you when you choose the workload that you want to work with, uh, web or .NET. So yeah, you can use that to start, or you can use the .NET um, you know, SDK and runtime. You can see that SDK is the software development kit where you will start uh, creating applications for the, in .NET. And runtime, you don't need to separately run, download runtime unless you are only looking to run .NET apps only. Otherwise, just go and download the SDKs and you should be good to go. And you should, uh, I mean, almost always you can use Visual Studio um, and Community Edition. It will install everything for you, set you up for success immediately. But if you're someone who wants to be sure that what workloads that I want to choose and start, that's also fine. So once you install the SDK, what, what, what happens is you will have this .NET command and you can go to .NET and type hyphen hyphen list hyphen SDKs, and it'll tell you what SDKs you're running. So you can see that I'm running on 7.0.100, which is RC release candidate. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, we are in the 7.0 release candidate right now. So if I want to see the run times, I can do the same thing, list run times, and you can see the number of run times I have. So I have different run times for say Windows apps to run Windows apps, I have different run times for running ASP.NET Core, ASP.NET is basically the web applications that you would build with .NET, and that's the name ASP.NET. Again, going back to the age-old name, ASP is Active Server Pages. So it all comes from there. A lot of history in there. So, um, so yeah, so I'll just clear this for now. And what I also want to show you is .NET is cross-platform, so I'm going to open Ubuntu. I'm using WSL, and here, if I go and say .NET list SDKs, and you can see that it is running 6.0.110, and 
and that's the SDK that I have installed it. So on my Windows, I have 7. Dot whatever release candidate, right? And then I have the 6.0, which is the LTS release. Uh, so I have run running on Ubuntu. So uh, do we have anything uh, interesting? Yeah, there are. There's no question. The interesting question is like, what's new in seven? Maybe you should wait. Oh, or... that I'm not going to talk now because <laughs> because we want you to. This is a primer session to get you to .NET Conf, and we want you to come to .NET Conf and see for yourself what is amazing and cool in .NET Seven. But anyway, this is <laughs> just kidding. It's open source, so you can go and check it out. The the entire release uh, pipelines and everything, you can go and check it out yourself. Right. All right. So let's get started. Um, so to make it easier, what I do generally is I go to uh, my mount. And you, you might want to show them what is templates. Oh, yeah, sure. Get to a proper directory. I think you need to zoom in a little bit. Oh, yes. Let's do that. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to get started with .NET, you can do a .NET new. And I'm just going to tip return key here. And you can see that. So because this is huge, you can see that you know uh, you have this ASP.NET Core app, which you can start with. There's a Blazor app. Uh, we'll talk about Blazor in a bit. We will take care of that. There's a class library. So if you are someone who's trying to just write a hello world, you can do a .NET new console app. It's the easiest way to get started with uh, any platform is to start writing console apps, writing apps to make it easier for you, um, right? OK, so if this is not just the, the workload, uh, sorry, the, the application um, that you can build, you can also build many. So if you go to .NET, new, and then if I put list, now you can see that number of things that you can build here, right? So you can build a gRPC app. You can build a web API, which is a REST endpoint. You can build a web app. You can build an MVC app. If you're someone who wants to build a single page applications like the spa, uh, we can use Angular or React. So you have templates for you to get started so that you don't start from scratch and add uh, libraries and packages and things like that. Instead, everything will be set up for you in the csproj file, and then you can get started quickly. Right? Um, so I'm not going to any of these things. Instead, let's let's start building a web app. OK, so you can see that this is a thing. You can use web app. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this as .NET new. I'm going to say I'm going to build a web app. And then I'll say I, I want this to be in an output directory. And I'll call this as hello web app. What this is going to do is it's going to create everything that is needed to build a web app. So let's let's go to because I output it to a directory, and you can see that there is all the things that automatically created for me, right? So important thing is the csproj files, which basically tells what you're building. Uh, so we can open that. Before that, even even before I can open this, I'm going to do a .NET build, and this is how you build your .NET apps. And if you want to run this. You can use, as you probably would have guessed it, right? Say .NET and say run, and it will go <laughs> ahead and run this application for you, right? Because we selected a web app, uh, the tools are smart enough to know that you know, you're know you actually building uh, a web app and you need an endpoint. So it creates a port for you. And if I go into this, let's ignore this error for now because I'm running from uh, Ubuntu and I've not registered this certificate. And you can see that it's a, just a simple template that came with home. Privacy, hello world app, right? That's cool. So let's go see the source code now. Open this in code. That's the Visual Studio editor, Visual Studio Code editor. Again, you can totally do this in Visual Studio if you want to, but I'm just making it easier for all of us to get started quickly. Okay, so this is what it is doing is it's you can see that the VS Code identified itself into it's running on Ubuntu, right? I'm running this code from Ubuntu. And then I can debug them directly if I want to. But if you look at csproj file, this is where it talks about. Um, so if you're have, if you using this for the first time, it'll tell you if you're not installed the C-sharp extension, it'll tell you to install the C-sharp extension. You can go ahead and say install and complete it. But in my case, I do have it. So I'm just going to ignore that. Um, and this is, you can see this target framework as .NET 6. Yes, go ahead. So I just have to change this. Uh, if I have to 
try the preview version 7 yeah. just change the dot net 7 and Correct. then the but code you, runs in 7 yeah but if you noticed i don't have 7 here right yeah that's fine but so that's why have... i'm going to use it 6.0 and i'm going to show you this running in 7 as well okay so because there's a web page that i web uh, web app that we're building so this is nothing but a re we, we use something called as razor pages uh, it's nothing but like you can have your C-sharp code within your HTML. So these are called Razor syntaxes. So whenever you want to, you saw when Vivek was writing console.write line, and if you write, want to write any C-sharp code, generally you will write it in a CS file, which is this, this .cs file where you write C-sharp code. But you can also go and write them in the HTML with an add tag as well. So you can write C-sharp code if you want, there, yeah. which is what I'm going to show you right now. So I'm not going to go into the details of what this is, what pages and things like that, but I'm just going to keep it here where you have a template to get started and let's write some basic little code to just make it run. Um, so I want to know where this application is running, right? So I'm going to say, okay, welcome, and probably I'll open a p tag. Uh, and then let's write some code, right? Oh, no, where am I running? So I'm going to say environment dot voice version, right? Just writing some C-sharp code here. Now, let's go ahead and run this. You can see that I'm not, I did not use .NET build. Even though I did not do .NET build, it went and built that file for me because it knows that I have made code changes. So it goes and do, does that. And now if I go and run this, right below this, you can see that it's running on my Unix, right? 5.10. So that's the .NET code running inside Linux. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close. Let's let's leave that there. Or let's let's go to the Windows right now. Go to the same folder here, and this is the reason why I was mounting it and just working, um, so that I can show you this together. So what was that? Hello, oh, my map. And that's this. Okay, now I have the same code. So if I just do a .NET, let's do .NET run. What it does, it's going to build this because this time I'm trying to run this from Windows, right? So in order for it to run, it also needs to compile it in ARM64 as well. Sorry, AMD64, which is my uh, instruction set for my CPU. And you can see that right now, this is the same code that's running on Windows NT. Cool. So, so what we saw just now is basically the same .NET code that's running on Linux and that's running on Windows as well, right? Magic. Okay, magically, cross-platform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So we the the thing that we did is we we also rebuilt it. So when you did .NET run, it built it for that platform. So. Generally, when you do a .NET build, it will keep it in your intermediate la layer, and then you can run it depending on where that application is running. So the runtime will take care of taking that assembly and then uh, comp compiling down to the natives and then running it there, right? OK, that is quick. And let's do one more thing. What we can do is, in order for this to run it on Docker, what do I do? Can I run this on Docker? Because everybody wants to run it on Docker, right? Everybody wants to run the .NET app or anything on Docker because Docker has become the de facto standard for so uh, Nish, before we go there, mm -hmm. before we go there, there is one question. What is what's the view data? I don't know where did that come in. Oh, but... that's the session. Yeah, session state. Achha, that's oh, it's a bag that cool. where you can actually uh -huh. have a key value pair written for it. Okay, uh, okay. Like you can have title, you can have key va basically key value pair that you want you can store it in the pages okay so Perfect. let's let's do the containerization before doing that okay uh, we talked about NuGet packages right so let's do some NuGet stuff so if you go to NuGet.org, this is where you can get packages and i'm going to use a package called humanizer and you can see that this is a package. What it does is it takes um, a string and kind of humanize it. 
Um, so this is an open source one. Uh, it's also maintained by .NET Foundation. So there's a project website. So if you go into this, you can see this. This is a GitHub. This is an open source project. And what it does is it does nice formatting of the string. And what I like about this is one of the things that I, I usually use is, um, is basically if you have a date time and you want to say that, you know, I this video was uploaded instead of saying on this date, I can say this video was uploaded yesterday or this video was uploaded uh, four days ago or five days ago. That's like human readable format instead of having a date time there, right? So you have this nice library which you can use to humanize it. Uh, and you can do m multiple things like, for example, if you do a can return title, title case, humanize, and then say uh, letter casing title, it'll basically what it does is it just puts space and gives you back. And, and there's like a lot of neat things that it can do. Uh, to add this, what I'm going to do, there are multiple ways to use NuGet. But because we are in this CLI, I'm going to use the .NET app package here. Before that, I want to make sure that I'm in the same folder where the CS project is. So this is where CS proj, you can see that. Um, so I'm going to add .NET add package and call this as humanizer. You can see that it is going to go to the nuget.org and going to add it to the project. And how do I know it? We go to the CS project again, and you can see this. There's a package reference and humanizer being added. It automatically goes and picks the latest version for you, right? So now we have the humanizer. So let's add it to the uh, to this page. So I need using oops, humanizer, right? And then here, what I'm going to do is put a p tag. Um, this page was last updated, and then I can say date time dot no. um let's say call it as utc now because that would be the right way um, copy this text because it was there in one of the modules so i'm going to use the same thing okay there you go so basically add ours minus 24 that's like yesterday so dot i'm going to say humanize right what this is this is an extension method so and date time it's basically part of your base class libraries. So you have date time available. UTC now is the UTC time. And then I'm adding 24 hours to it, which means minus 24 hours, which is means I want to say this page was updated yesterday. You can do date time dot now if you want to. That's what I was initially thinking of doing it, but then this is better. Um, and then do humanize, right? Now I want to run this. Now I can go ahead and do a dot net run and make it show you in the... Uh, in the existing place. But instead of that, what I'm going to do is, as I was discussing to you, let's run this on Docker, right? So to run this on that Docker, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Control Shift P in VS Code. And I'll say add uh, Docker file. Oh, I know I open door. So let's open this code from here. Yeah, that's the profile. Oh, yes. So I'm going to add the Docker file from here. So now it's going and activating. So it's asking me what platform are you using? So yes, I'm using ESP.NET. Uh, come on, choose it. Oops. What's wrong? Um, it's asking me what operating system that I want to run on. I'll choose Linux port. 5197 looks good. And what it is doing, it's asking me, do I need a Docker Compose file? I don't need it. So I'm going to, that's all. What it does is it creates a Docker file for me automatically. This is really cool. Same thing in Visual Studio as well. So if you right click and say add Docker file, it would just simply add Docker file to that space. It'll set you up for running in Docker. So for those of you who are new, uh, who are thinking what is Docker, it's basically, we're just containerizing it. In the sense, we are packaging 
our applications and um, the source code, the configurations, runtimes, everything into a single image that can run anywhere. And when I say run anywhere, run anywhere the Docker host runs. So the advantage you get is you could put it into an orchestrator like Kubernetes in the server. And sometimes you can have a Node.js, Python, .NET app, they're all running in the same cluster uh, because Kubernetes will manage that for you, right? So I'm using, uh, so I'll not go into the details of these Docker file it is. I mean, if you're interested, we have, uh, I'm happy to go through it, but we'll keep it simple. Or you can check some of our previous episodes where we have covered this in depth on how to do this, right? All right, now in Visual Studio, if I go to the run and debug place, and I can choose, instead of running directly on .NET Core, I'm gonna say, I want Docker. I wanna run this on Docker. So before that, make sure you have Docker installed in your uh, in your system. Otherwise, uh, it's not gonna work. So now you can see that it is going and building this image. And let's see what happens. There you go. It opens 491 by four. And you can see that the humanize package is now not telling me the date from yesterday. Instead, it says the page was last updated yesterday. And you can also see that it's running on Unix 5.10 because we used a Linux container in .NET. So Vivek, does it sound good? Yep, this is brilliant. Cool. So everything that I showed you today, it's actually an extraction from some of the learn modules, which I want you to go and try it out later. So this, the humanizer was picked up from here, create a new project and work dependencies. Debugging .NET apps with VS Code that you saw, now I was doing it with Docker. Uh, I can put a breakpoint and debug it if I want to. You can go into the details over here. And then <clears throat> if you go down, down, and you build your first microservice with .NET, this module has the explanation on Dockerfile, how do you get started with Dockerfile and things like that. So this is a pretty good content for you to get started in .NET and, and pretty much touch on every platform, right? So we learned to write C-sharp a little bit. Uh, we learned how to create a new project in .NET. Uh, that happened to be a web project, which is great. And then we, show, we, we saw how to run it on WSL, which is Linux. We saw how to run it on Windows. We also saw how to run it on um, Docker. And Docker. we also saw how to add packages when you want to add packages. And now, what is slowly moving on, I last week week to cover the Blazor app so, so that we can, yep. we, can, we can also look at one more platform. True. The let me present my screen. Yeah. I hope you can see my screen. It's a lot it's of good going. comments coming in. This is very nice. Thank you. Oh. It's really cool. Thank you. I mean, try it out yourself. It's really, really cool. We have just shown you a little bit of what amazing things that you can do in .NET. So. If you go to the, uh, let me set this up for people because I'm going to arrive it with the learn module for you all. So if you go to the, you know, the cloud, <laughs> cloud skill challenge, there is a module build a web app with uh, Blazor. And uh, it's basically what you know, we're going to learn what is it and how to build it. And we're going to build one and we'll see what it is. And uh, just for the introduction purpose, you know, understanding what is Blazor app is, you know, for an example, you know, what used to happen previously is uh, you need to uh, we used to write two different, uh, you know, programming languages as a web developer. If there is a front end developer, there's a back end developer. Back end development is done on different programming language and there is a front end developers are writing in JavaScript and uh, both of them are different uh, code. And, 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 and also it is because of the performance issues which were uh, rendering because of uh, where the compilation is happening, right? JavaScript basically uh, downloads the code, tokenizes it and then parses it and then uh, it, it provides you the output, right? So that is what JavaScript does. and uh, there was no compilation at the uh, at the client side, so that is where uh, Blazor uh, comes into picture with the uh, in a WebAssembly. Uh, 
uh, which is which is always called as wasm and uh, that's that's the main uh, utility here and i'll quickly run through this because i want to show you how exactly this runs so it's very simple uh, we want to run uh, you know uh, c sharp code at the browser and compile it with the browser and uh, not really uh, you know make sure and not really compile it at the uh, server side and always have to uh, push it on to the browser right so previously the javascript used to work like that it used to connect with the uh, server and then used to run it so you can also have a couple of things uh, added at the browser side as well so that is the main uh, purpose and that's been run with uh, .NET and uh, WebAssembly and Razor components as well. So we're going to talk about uh, what is Razor components as well in this module. There are a couple of things which uh, it will, and we will run through that as well. While I'll do the uh, demo. So uh, there is another uh, system called a Signal R. So I think Nish can explain it much better than I. You know, basically, this is if you want to run it in the uh, backend, you know, you have the Razor components, the UI components, which needs to be coming from the server side. Uh, you are going to connect through SignalR protocol and then uh, use it onto the uh, UI. Am I correct, uh, Nish? This is correct. Yeah. So, I mean, if you've seen me doing the web app right now, I was doing Razor pages, and that's completely yes. server side rendering, like in the sense, like the page goes back, renders on the uh, sorry, it, it it compiles all the C sharp and things like that, modifies the HTML, sends the DOM object back to the uh, browser, and browser just renders it. Right? Uh, in Blazor, there's two approaches that, as you mentioned, there's one is a WebAssembly where you don't send anything to the server, you run everything in the browser. So instead of Java, just like how JavaScript does, uh, instead of JavaScript, you use C sharp to run it. Uh, the one that you are explaining right now, which is the uh, which is the server side Blazor. So I don't know uh, if you if you remember the Ajax days when we used to have this part of the component goes back to the server, renders, it comes back. It's the same concept, but uses different technologies. Uh, we're using SignalR. SignalR is a technology where it uses the WebSocket. It's for real-time communication. So if you're writing a chat application, you want to be uh, communicating between the servers and things like that, you can use SignalR to do it. And it, it's a kind of like a layer on top of WebSockets and other things. So depending on what uh, support is available in the browser, so it'll switch the communication depending on that. Uh, so in this case, it goes through web web sockets and takes only those server components, so the, so the Razor components, uh, processes in the server, and then spits out the DOM and it updates the DOM in real time. So that's what is so net and net. You basically don't write JavaScript at all. Uh, you write everything in C sharp, and yeah. magically this is all taken care of for you behind the scenes. Yeah, but it is not a replacement for JavaScript. You can still use JavaScript yep. to do various other things which JavaScript does. Uh, this is from a performance perspective, uh, from a security perspective, you can build something which is very much needed uh, at the browser end. Uh, you want to compile something at the browser end and you want to make sure that the performance of the you know application is good. So that is where you're going to use uh, Blazor as well. So let, let's go back and let's let's create one actually. So if you are with me, if you are on this, and if you have the setup, right, you just have to, uh, this anyways, Nisha has already shown this uh, command, how this works. Uh, I will not run that. So I will straight away go and uh, create a new uh, Blazor app, right? So let me go and say, okay, let's go and create New Blazor server app. So, so we covered see. all the three platforms today, right? We did. Yeah. Uh, yep. I showed on Linux using WSL. I showed you Windows, and you're now doing it on the Mac. Very cool. Perfect. So cool. Let me open this up. What is it? Demo. Today's demo. Trust it. So this is the structure. So I'm using the template, which Nish was showing, right? How to use the template and uh, basically, oh, I'm actually this. Cool. So I'm using that same template, or oh, this is there. Not now. Require assets. Oh, no. Yes. 
fine <laughs> setting <laughs> up okay cool this is the same uh, structure uh, you know the you know template i used uh, the way nish was showing and uh, you can see that you know the code is there and the programs and everything is here all the properties is set and you can see the pages which again uh, you know uh, nish was showing right so there is Razor pages. So, what does this mean? Is basically you can see a couple of things here in the counter uh, dot razor here. There is an add code directive and an add page. So, basically, whenever you go for slash counter uh, in your code, uh, you can see there is uh, you know there is a bunch of things which will run, and this is the code which is uh, C sharp code. So, this is a mix of C sharp and HTML. This is what is known as uh, razor components right so it is uh, you know it is having html code and also uh, there is a c uh, c sharp code and this is going to run in the browser so let's go ahead and see this is the structure which is there and all those things very simple we just have to run uh, watch so we'll go here watch and this is a hot reload which was enabled in .NET 6, right? Yeah. So basically, once you run this, it's whenever you make changes to the code, it'll do the compilation and running it for you. So you don't have to go back and forth building and running just like the way I was doing. So Vivek is smart. He's doing the right things. <laughs> <laughs> I was going on .NET build, .NET run. Oh, wait. I was doing on different platforms as well, right? So... It's opening. Uh, it asks you for some certificate. Were you able to? I did allow. Yeah, now oh. you need that password. I did put password, the password and say It gave the right set password, hopefully. Now we all know your password. It's 10 dots. <laughs> I don't know why it is not running. Uh, type it in again, maybe. And say always hello. Don't say hello. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, because I do have the one which is running. <laughs> I do have it running in another system. Anyways. <laughs> it's the same cool. system? No, no. I'm running it on the another terminal. Sorry. Yeah. On a, but it is a different code, actually. It's a completed okay. code. Okay. So I just wanted to show how you can run this. Uh, uh, but I don't know why it is not running, why there is an issue. Anyways. This is how it runs. And anyways, you'll get this uh, website. And once you're here, uh, we can go and we can actually open the code here itself. So I have the code. Ta -da. Let me open the code. All right, there's a blizzard app. Oh, again, this shows up. <laughs> So the same thing, uh, I have made a couple of changes here uh, from the code which is there in the previous one and this one because I, I just completed this module. So you can see that uh, in, in the code, uh, basically in the counter code, I've added a couple of things. You know, basically uh, it the thing which was missing here is uh, this is the counter code which is running at the browser level. Right, and you can see there is counter is increasing with this one is, only. This, this is, is WebAssembly, or is it the? It is WebAssembly, the same module. This is the same yeah. module. Is it WebAssembly, or is it the Blazor Server Code? I, sorry, I this didn't one. pay attention to. This is Blazor Server Code. Server Code, right? You can actually do a control, um, like show the developer tools and see how that's getting refreshed. Yeah. So this is so basically this is the refreshment is anyways happening uh, from the control uh, itself. So there is a you know counter razor is happening right. So there is 
uh let me show you the most important thing is let's let's go and see what this razor component and all is there there's a counter let us talk through this code because that's the easiest way to understand this whole thing so the page is there and in pages we have a counter dot razor code and this was not there previously it was just counter one and it was increasing one and this is the code which is written in the uh, with, the, with the C sharp and the HTML page, which is in the Razor, right? So it is written. And uh, that is what uh, Razor component is all about, right? So then once you run it, what happens is uh, it just updates this counter here. And what we have done is we have added one more counter here. So what does that is basically if I go to uh, my index and I've called the counter this thing. So I, if I don't give this and if I don't add anything here, um, you know, it just It'll calling the counter. One. Yeah, it will just add plus one, right? So if I go and save this and it's hot reloading now, and hopefully this will show me No, this is yet to reload. Yeah, so it is, you know, plus one only, right? So now if I go back here and you know, add uh, control Z and save. So what it's doing is basically, I'm going to add, uh, every time I'm going to call this counter, it will add 10. So in this count, you know, code, I made some changes to this. So I'm writing C sharp code and in with the uh, HTML in the browser side, it is compiling at the browser side and, uh, and it is getting executed. Nothing is going in the backend, right? So that is what I just wanted to show, uh, but somehow it is not running. So I'm just showing what is running on my another terminal. So that is part of this uh, module. And uh, if I have to go and show you how to add components, uh, uh, this is the component, yeah. this is the code which I have added. But the most important thing is uh, there is something called as, we have added a razor page right so directives which we have created so i'll show you how to how to do that one as well like creating a new razor component altogether so i have created something called as to do uh, dot razor so if you see this this module has the code as well so you can just go through this code so what it does is basically a to do app um if i have to show you this in a better way so it does a to do app and uh, we when I just wanted to write this uh, live, but anyways, it's already written, so it's easy. So again, this is the code which is, this is uh, all C sharp. This, this is, is C sharp, and this yeah. is all in the directives of, of the at pages. And there are a bunch of directives as well. If you uh, just open up and see, there are a bunch of directives which is there in in layouts. And if you see namespaces, using different things, and you can also use those things, and uh, Coming to the to do razor component, this is a new component you're going to add. So it's been added. And the same way, if you go to uh, navigation.razor and add a new class, uh, this is the to do, uh, you know, you're going to add uh, to do the to do app. So, where we are adding this is basically here is where we are going to add to do app. And this is where you're going to add. This is the to do stuff which we added, right? So, samosa, like chai. So, the code is there. So, you can take a look at it uh, in the whole thing. But this is like completing here itself. So, it has everything getting updated and everything is running here. Like the code is compiled here itself. So, if you go to this here, it is, it is getting compiled here. So, that's the that's the you know that's what we wanted to show like how you can use blazor um, and make sure you use the same uh, programming language which is the c sharp in the you know to compile code at the browser end and use it and uh, use it with the html 
you can also use javascript uh, with this uh, maybe you want something from javascript uh, maybe something is pretty easier to do it with javascript or you like to use the you know uh, javascript in a specific way so you could go back and use it here right so that's what i just wanted to show how you can uh, use it and this uh, module has everything uh, the code uh, how to get started from a basic empty um, you know to do component you know somehow i just wanted to make sure this i execute this but something is wrong i don't know let's see let's try that out later <laughs> but yeah nish over to you yeah yeah so just a quick thing i mean uh, i know the questions on whether this um jsx i think it's the uh, i mean uh, it's more think of it like uh, web assembly like c sharp running inside uh, the browser. And if it is not WebAssembly, if it's a Blazor server, think of it like uh, taking the C-sharp code and running in the server, but you will barely notice it because the connection between the browser and the server is on a WebSocket. That means it's a real-time communication. So it just quickly goes and updates and, and, and refreshes your screen that you will barely notice it. So uh, that's the technology that it's using. And uh, questions on JavaScript, like you can use a bunch of NuGet libraries as I showed you in the NuGets. There are like a bunch of anything that's that's kind of like platform neutral ones. It's easily, you can use them in Blazor. Uh, so something like a humanizer and uh, things like that, if you want to use it, you can directly use those. Um, there are times when you want to use JavaScript and that is when you have libraries that are in JavaScript that you want to reuse them. Uh, say you are written it for some of the projects and you don't want to pull it to C-sharp, you want to use reuse them, you can use those JS using JS invoke and um, like pretty much how uh, and high level, like a language can actually invoke a JavaScript function. Um, it can, it will do the same thing there. So, uh, so there is a bunch of articles and tutorials uh, out there, but I will really encourage you to kind of cover the learn modules if you are new to the .NET. Go through them, uh, you'll get an idea about each has its own um, details in it. So don't forget to go check that out. Cool. I think, um, I think yeah, we, we are almost done um, yep. with our primer to .NET. So this is like giving you a gist of what .NET you can do. This, this things that we have not covered, like creating mobile apps for Androids and iOS using .NET or creating a game or creating an IoT, right? But they are all included in that Cloud Skill Challenge. So if you spend some time exploring them, uh, you should be able to uh, quickly get onto that uh, pretty quickly. So it's it's like being on .NET, the biggest advantage you have is like you have the ability to go and write for any platform. Um, all that you need to know is understand the and understand the platform itself and platform APIs. So for example, when you're working with web you work with http objects request responses and things like that but when you go to mobile you probably are not going to work on that instead you're going to work with platform apis so there would be differences how you the, the common language that you will use to write all these things is c sharp the tooling that you will use is the either visual studio vs code right uh, or in the cli so that's the that's the whole gist and this is what we wanted to show you and and if you want dependencies you have new gets so this is what we wanted to show you but we encourage you to check out the .NET Conf that's going to happen uh, next week. And uh, if, by the way, if you are in Bangalore, yeah. like Vivek and I will be there at a watch party. We are doing it um, uh, on 8th of November at night, 9 p.m. So if you want to come and hang around with us, we would be live stream. I mean, we'll be watching the .NET Conf, .NET 7 launch, uh, watching the keynote. And we'll be happy to take up some questions if you have, or just come and hang around with us. Like it's going to be fun uh, yeah. at the uh, at, at the Microsoft office uh, in Belendur in Bangalore. True, I think that was going to be fun. You know, I think we I've, I've done a couple of um, the watch parties in the night for Ignite and Build and stuff. This was pre-COVID time, so it was fun. So if you want yeah. to have fun, just come down. So yeah. We'll Others can watch to... it online. <laughs> yeah, you can watch it online too. 
yeah there's one we're just going to watch it. you're going to watch the keynote only not the whole show okay <laughs> yeah that's true otherwise we will have to keep the offices open <laughs> um okay there was one question on my uh shell themes okay i assume you're talking about my terminal so i'm going to show you <laughs> very quickly if this is the terminal that you're thinking of it it just if you go to oh my posh oh my this is my power shell cons- yeah customize so if you go to the themes over here and the first theme that you see this this is this is the theme that i'm i'm using so it has like you just have to install particular font that they last you to install and then on windows you can use i'm using windows terminal so you can use you know this is how you can install it's much easier with winget by the way winget install oh my posh and you should be able to install and set the theme up it's just going to be pretty quick so i don't have any other customization there uh it's just that theme uh so go ahead and try that out i'm also using the same cool uh on mac you have oh my zsh i guess yeah oh my zsh i'm using that okay yeah so okay cool um uh, are we done any more questions you have no more questions no yeah cool it's nice we pretty much covered everything and by the way you can go back and you know watch the playlist of samosachai.net um for you know a couple of things which we have done from maui to even blazor uh and some of the stuff with microservices eight episodes on microservices so that's something which is interesting yeah we have covered advanced topics and now we come down to the basics of getting started so which is fun and 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 tell us like if you would you like to see more sessions which is level 100 uh during this time uh yeah let us know i mean we would be happy to i mean that those are the feedback which will help us which will help vivek and i to kind of like steer these sessions into something more useful for all of you uh so if you need something like that just let us know and we would be happy to um continue doing that cool all right vivek so we'll meet at the dotnet watch party next week um yep Okay. Bye bye. Take care. All right. Thank you all Thank you for everyone. attending. Thank you. See you. Thank you so much for coming in today. Take care.